howdy howdy today i would like to do a quick video on one of slavoj zizek's articles entitled hegel on donald trump's objective humor this article is essentially just a critique of liberal anti-trump comedy and it was published while trump was still in office uh so just to jump right into it zizek begins this article by uh, mentioning Hegel's distinction between subjective and objective humor. Subjective humor is analogous to postmodern irony. Uh, in fact, Hegel calls it romantic irony. Um, this sort of irony is based on deconstructing and relativizing and not taking anything seriously. It is constituted by the uh, iron by ironic detachment by detach the, the subject detaching itself and distancing it distancing itself from uh any particular you know object or content and typically making fun of whatever content it distances itself from um and again this is what hegel calls romantic irony and for hegel and for zizek this sort of romantic irony is utterly impotent um in terms of actually uh, having uh, an effect in the world. Rather, all it does is it allows the subject to feel a sort of inner superiority in its detachment and distance from uh, the object or the content. Um, now for Zizek, this is the this subjective humor is the essence of the liberal anti-Trump comedy that was so popular while Trump was in office and while he was campaigning in uh, 20, 2015 and 2016, and is actually um, still around to this day. Um, so on the uh, topic of subjective humor, Zizek says, quote, it actually threatens nothing. It just provides the ironic subject with the illusion of inner freedom and superiority. When individuals are caught in an impenetrable cobweb of social relations, the only way to assert their subjectivity is a niche of jokes which allegedly demonstrate their inner superiority." Unquote. Now, one example of uh, this sort of subjective humor that I like to use uh, and I actually write about it in my book, A Faces, The Impossibility of Subjectivity. Um, one example is the OK Boomer phrase or meme that was so popular uh, just a few years ago. Now, uh, OK Boomer is, uh, it, was, it was essentially uh, millennials and Gen Zers, they would say this phrase to boomers or an older person whenever this person said something they disagreed with or considered embarrassing or antiquated or cringe they would just say okay boomer um now what i pointed out is that this phrase in terms of substance is utterly meaningless uh, um, and the point i make is that that's the whole point the point of the okay boomer phrase is that boomers for the gen zers for millennials their very subjectivity was antiquated it was considered uh, lacking and lesser and the point of uh, the OK Boomer phrase is to highlight the lackingness of the uh, Boomer subject by um, instead of engaging with the Boomer in terms of content, instead of bringing it within an argumentative framework, it distanced the millennials and the Gen Zers distance themselves from the Boomers in this um, ironic phrase, OK Boomer, this meaningless phrase. Um, and this phrase, the function of this phrase was to point out that we don't even need to engage with you at, at the level of content, at the, at the level of argument, substantial argument, because your very subjectivity is antiquated and you just can't understand us. And uh, for that reason, all we're going to say is, OK, Boomer. Now, this sort of subjective humor is uh, for Hegel opposed to objective humor, what Zizek calls uh, a sort of ontological irony which instead of distancing and making fun it, uh, of a particular position, it takes the position and it takes it, it takes it more seriously than the position takes itself. Um, this relates to 
um, the way Zizek and Todd McGowan and those people understand dialectics. Dialectics is not one position confronting another position and battling it out. Rather, it's taking the one position, dramatizing it to reveal its inner antagonism or its inner contradiction. And in this way, it will negate itself. It will undergo a process of, of, of self-undermining. Um, and this um, is, of course, uh, the essence of what Zizek calls subversive affirmation. Uh, there's a whole video on this channel talking about subversive, subversive affirmation and relating it to the comedy of Norm MacDonald, because Norm MacDonald, uh, one time he went on The View because he had to apologize for uh, some comments he made, which were um, uh, supposedly offensive. And instead of doing what uh, a normal transgressive uh, comedian would do, and that would be to uh, talk about, uh, to um, uh, stand in opposition to political, the ideology of political correctness and be politically incorrect. Instead, Norm fully uh, affirmed the ideology of political correctness. And uh, um, essentially, you can watch the video if you're interested in that. And in this way, he undermined the ideology by taking it more seriously than um, than it does itself. Now, Zizek will argue that the parodying of Trump isn't objective humor. It is rather subjective humor, which instead of identifying with and just showing how Trump is already a walking uh, contradiction, instead of affirming that and in this way undermining him, they distance themselves. Um, comedians will distance themselves from Trump and try and parody what is already a self parody. In fact, uh, Norm McDonald himself says this, and this is why Norm is coming at this from a completely apolitical perspective. But for Norm, this is why anti Trump comedy uh, wasn't funny at the time. And, and also, you know, Trump oftentimes is doing self, self parody, and uh, nothing looks dumber than if you parody self parody, you know, you really get, get caught uh, uh, not understanding. So for both Norm and Zizek, there is something false about anti-Trump humor. Uh, so for Norm, it's not funny because Trump is already a self parody. And for Zizek, it has no um, political power because it has, uh, because Trump is already a self parody and to parody a self, uh, a self parody is, is meaningless. It does nothing. And also Zizek will mention that people don't typically identify with other people's strengths, but they identify with their weaknesses. And this is why the more comedians pointed out and ridiculed Trump for his weaknesses, uh, the, the more his supporters identified with them. They saw Trump as just one of them, as, you know, a someone who was actually fighting for the people. Um, and it just, by making fun of, of Trump for his weaknesses, liberal comedians uh, and liberals in general were just making them look, uh, uh, making themselves uh, appear as patronizing to the general public, and of course, uh, specifically Trump's supporters. Now, Zizek will go on to end this video by quote, quoting an old and famous joke of his about the farmer whose wife is raped by a Mongol, and the Mongol tells the farmer to hold his balls so that they, get, they don't get dusty. And after the rape, uh, the farmer laughs since the Mongol's balls are now full of dust. And Zizek will, of course, link this mere dusting of the balls to the liberal anti-Trump comedians who they merely dusted his balls, but of course the point is to cut them off. Cut the balls, we need to cut the balls, we need to cut the balls, the balls of those in power, we need to cut the balls and then make the bloody shower.